You're listening to the Options Insider Radio Network. For more quality options programs, visit www.theoptionsinsider.com or search for Options Insider Radio Network in your podcast provider of choice. Listeners can also access all of our programming through our mobile app, available in iTunes and on Google Play. Don't forget to follow along with your favorite programs and submit your own questions for the hosts at twitter.com slash options, facebook.com slash the options insider, or via questions at the options insider.com. Welcome to the options playbook, the program where we break down cutting edge option strategies and explain how you can incorporate them into your own portfolio. Whether you're looking to grow your capital with some offensive maneuvers or protect your investments with defensive plays, you can find them all in the Options Playbook. The Options Playbook is brought to you by Trade King Group. Anything mentioned today is for educational purposes and is not a recommendation or advice. Options involve risk. Please refer to tradeking.com slash ODD to review additional risks involved with trading options. Securities offered through Trade King LLC, member FINRA and SIPC. Now let's open the playbook and get started. Hello, everybody, and welcome to the first episode of Options Playbook for 2015. My name is Mark Longo from the OptionsInsider.com, as well as from the ever-expanding, ever-exciting Options Insider Radio Network. 13 programs to choose from on said network, including all of the fantastic archived episodes of this Options Playbook program. Where can you find them? Well, of course, optionsplaybook.com be a great place to start, as well as theoptionsinsider.com. You can certainly find all the archived episodes of this program there, as well as all the other dozen programs on our network. And, of course, iTunes, Stitcher, AHA Mobile. You can find them all baked into that. And if that's too much for you, we put it all into a mobile app available for iOS, Android, even the Fire OS. So there's no shortage of ways for you guys to enjoy this program and to, of course, interact with us as well. We love your questions, your comments, your feedback. In fact, today's episode is going to be all about that, all about you guys, the listeners. What better way to kick off 2015? And of course, I'm not the usual host of this show. I'm just a guest here today. But let me introduce your regular host, Mr. Brian Overby, the Senior Vice President of Education over there at Trade King. Brian, welcome back to your own program. Well, thank you. Thank you. It's great to be back, Mark. Great to be back. <laughs> and I think I, I love doing this. I don't get a chance to come on the show as often as I'd like, but I love doing it because whenever I get to come on, it means we get to use a little used segment of the show we call The Huddle, where you and I get to put our heads together and answer some fun listener questions. So without further ado, let's get right into it and dive right on into The Huddle. It's time to huddle up and answer questions about your favorite options plays. Submit your questions via questions at theoptionsinsider.com, twitter.com slash options, facebook.com slash theoptionsinsider, or via the trader network at tradeking.com. All right, everybody, like the man said, this is the portion of the show where you guys get to take the reins and send in your questions, comments, and feedback for us here on the old program. A lot of you have done just that, so we have a mountain of questions to get to. Let's see how many we can get to in this episode. We'll kick them off with a couple of questions that fall into a theme, and that theme today is going to be theta, or time decay. The first question comes in here from... Brian Colomer, he writes, hi, Brian, <laughs> Brian Overby, he's talking about. In this show, you were describing selling out of the money options. You mentioned that when selling options, the fastest theta decay occurs in the 45 to 30 day range. I thought that was only true for at the money options. Don't out of the money options decay fastest at 60 to 70 days and then kind of flatten out. Great show. Wish it was longer. Thanks, Brian. Well, great question there, Mr. Colomer. And decay is an interesting topic, Theta. I think a very confusing one to a lot of newcomers in the option space uh, because there are so many facets to it. You have at-the-money options, and they're decaying so rapidly. You have out-of-the-money options to kind of decaying a little bit differently. But, of course, they consist entirely of time premium. So decay impacts them on a percentage basis substantially, whereas uh, you have some other options in the monies and others that have some intrinsic value that isn't going to decay. So there's a lot of different factors that play into decay, as you might expect, and as your question reflects here, Brian. So without further ado, 
Mr. Overby, since he asked you directly, I'll toss it to you first. Uh, what do you have to say here for our friend, Mr. Colomer? Well, hello, Brian. Thank you so much for the question. And I do recall, actually, there's been quite a few shows that I've kind of talked about theta decay from the 45-day down to the 25-day. You mentioned 30-day in your question, but it's really that 20-day range. Now, the, where this really comes from is some study, and, I, and, I, and I obviously you don't send me emails asking for it because I don't know exactly where it is, but I have read some things about Theta and, and the biggest or the, the most decent range that was ever mentioned was from the 45 day range down to the 25 day range. And that is talking about at the money and a little bit out of the money option contracts. Now you're mentioned a 60 to 70 day range. I've never really seen a study on that, but here's the concept. A lot of people think that when you're selling options, and this is really what I was just trying to drive home, that you should sell 15 day options because you get this huge rate of decay from day 15 to day zero. Now, the trade off there is that if you do sell that option and you're wrong about the direction, they are very high gamma options. And gamma is acceleration, that means they work against you really fast. So I think more of the concept here when we're selling a 45 day option, looking for it to become a 25 day option contract. If I'm doing that, let's say I'm selling a two point wide spread and let's be, you know, within just within a standard deviation away. Right. And let's look at a 45 day option versus a 15 day option. Here's the concept. I might be able to sell that 45 day two point spread for 40 cents if I go out to the 45 day option as opposed to doing it for the 15 day option where I could sell it for 15 or 20 cents. Now, as that option decays and, and that spread decays, over the next 20 days, I can go back and I'm probably going to get at least 20 cents from the decay of the 45 day spread as opposed to selling something for 20 cents and only getting 20 cents when it goes to zero. That last nickel, last dime of any option contract is almost impossible to extract unless you're really right at expiration. So this is the main concept of it. I understand it, and I've seen some studies that talk about the math, but the concept is instead of selling a 20 cent spread that's the same distance out of the money in the shorter term, It'd be better off to sell a 45-day spread, hold it for 20 days, and then try to close it out. Also, where that helps you is that if I am wrong, it moves slower against you. In other words, you don't have the high gamma of those near-term options. So whenever I'm talking about just selling an option outright or selling an out-of-the-money call spread or an out-of-the-money put spread, this is a very interesting range to play with, that 45-day range. Now, going out further in time, that could also be true, but I've never really seen any studies that say that that is the case. Yeah, it's an interesting question and very interesting topic. Uh, I'm with you. I've never seen any any material that says anything about the 60 to 70 day range for out of the money options. That would be a very odd period if it were indeed the case. I would probably lean towards the fact that that's not particularly the case. You know, it's and it's it's there are many different facets to this question, which is why it's so interesting, because on a pure percentage basis, uh, you're right. The south of 15 day options are where you want to uh, you want to migrate your selling activity because Pure percentage basis, all the money options are going to decay to zero, all other things being held equal in that last final two-week period. That's why if you look at any chart, any graph of theta decay over time, you see it just gets near exponential in that final two weeks. But of course, on a net premium basis, you may not be collecting that much because, like Brian said, you could be selling these options for 10, 15 cents and then waiting the full two weeks for that all to go all the way to zero. So on a pure return basis, you can collect 100%, which is why those charts look so steep and why it's so attractive, and that's why so much business has flocked to the weeklies over the past couple of years because people are grasping onto this concept and realizing they could sell these options and have them go essentially to zero if they play their cards right and they hold it all the way to 
right about expiration time. So that's an attractive thing for premium sellers, that near or close to 100% return. Uh, but what Brian's saying is also correct, that you're, there is a lot of risk in that. These are very high gamma options. You're shorting a lot of gamma. So from an efficacy perspective in terms of being able to manage the position and actually maybe collect net a little bit more premium doing it that way as well, that's your true concern. A lot of people, that's really what they want, not percentage return, but how much money they can actually make. Uh, then that little bit farther out range will give you a little bit meatier option and give you a little bit more cushion, a little bit more of a bulwark against negative gamma coming back to bite you. So a very interesting question, Brian. I think this is a, a topic we can clearly sink our teeth into. In fact, we're going to with yet another question from Mukund Ambarge. I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly. Uh, he writes, hi. Hello, Mukund. <laughs> I had a question on Theta Decay. Well, good thing. This is a very thematic show today. He goes on to write, I understand that Delta is in constant flux with every tick or move in the stock. Uh, the Delta slash Gamma changes. Implied Vol is in constant flux with buying and selling of options and volume, etc. So Vega changes with option transactions. But Theta Decay is the only one which always is a steady pace, i.e. it's not like it will decay quickly today and slowly tomorrow. The question is, when is the theta decay really adjusted in the prices of options? Do the theta decay, does the theta decay, a little few error typos here I'm trying to correct, uh, does the theta decay get adjusted at every tick or move or every hour? If it is adjusted daily, then when is the theta decay taking out of the options? Early morning before the startup trading or late in the day like the last few minutes, that whole day's th worth of theta is taken out. Also, I don't know, when is the weekend theta taken out of prices? Friday early morning or Friday ending or middle of the day? Basically, when does the market maker run prices with the model and set the prices? Only once before trading starts or does he keep adjusting every minute, hour, tick based on demand supply? Thanks, Mukun. Well, an interesting question. This reflects a very, very prominent misconception out there, particularly in the beginner option community, that theta is indeed this just straight kind of line progression that we see on a lot of charts and a lot of basic options, you know, educational books, uh, that theta just moves in this exact linear progression, uh, when the truth is almost exactly the opposite. Uh, Mr. Overby, why don't you go ahead and enlighten our friend McCoon on the actual workings of theta? All right. Uh, thanks for your question, McCoon, and thanks for listening. But this is this is a very loaded question, and I don't know the answers exactly, and I don't even know if you ask a market maker if they know the answers exactly to these questions. Now, you're right. You have a weekend. If you look at any pricing model, the pricing models always go by calendar days. They don't look for actual trading days. So if you're looking at just a model in general and you're looking at theoretical prices, yeah, it's a more linear fashion, as Mark mentioned. But if I'm thinking about what can happen as ex as Friday is coming, I have seen values. I have seen some time premiums start to come out at the end of the day on Thursday. And here's the other thing about this is it depends on the underlying stock. Uh, if it's a volatile stock and there's a lot of juice in it, I really think that theta decay starts on Thursday as you're approaching the close. And that's going to slowly start working on out where on less volatile stocks, I think you will see it maybe begin on Friday. But unfortunately, there's no golden book of answers here. Um, you know, there, there's models work only so much. And here's another thing as expiration approaches and, uh, and the option contract, let's say, is out of the money or way in the money, the models really kind of start to break down. They only really work good on right at the money option contracts because if you think of it this way, if I'm way out of the money and that option's trading for five cents, it's going to continue to trade for five cents basically d depending on where the stock is at because they're just not going to let you go and buy that option for nothing. So there's a part of this that deals with the models, you know, but – when expiration is approaching, some of these models will break down. I guess that's the moral to the story. So unfortunately, McCoon, I, there, there's no golden book of answers. I mean, the biggest thing that you, I think you really want to watch for is if you have a volatile stock, uh, I really think they start taking – the volatility, the implied volatility – puts a lot of juice into that option contract. And I think that decay for the weekend really starts coming out earlier than non-volatile stocks. That's really all that I can give you on this one. 
Yeah, this is another another issue that a lot of people have coming to options. They read these books, they think that, not the playbook certainly, but a lot of other tomes out there uh, that say theta is just this straight linear progression and it, it starts on the day the option is listed and it progresses at a nice steady pace throughout until the time that the options expires and it kind of accelerates a bit, like we just said, in those final few weeks. Uh, but you can look at myriad examples of this not being the case. If you want to look just very recent history there, McCoon, look back at the way options perform going into those final few weeks of December there in the holiday weekends where you had truncated holiday weeks. And this happens a lot pretty much on any long holiday weekend. So you have an extended period without trading days. In that case, we had the holidays off. You have long holiday weekends, whatever the case may be. In those holiday periods, you see this play out very dramatically. It's always a question at the beginning of the week. When is the market? When are they going to start taking Uh, the decay out. And in some of those holiday Christmas weeks where there wasn't a lot on the calendar, there wasn't anything really lurking towards the end of the week that would make people want to save their bullets or keep their powder dry, they started taking some of that premium out pretty aggressively very early in the week, late Monday into Tuesday even. They were starting to rapidly start filtering some of that decay out. So if you waited until that truncated session there on Wednesday or or the Friday session to try to claim some of that, that weekend worth of decay, you already missed quite a bit of it. And this happens quite a bit. If you wait till that last minute on Friday, you're actually probably better off not selling and maybe even buying them because most of the decay has already come out of those options. And you're probably trading on a level that is closer to Monday's open. So you're kind of essentially giving away a free weekend's worth of risk at that point if you're selling those options. So it definitely varies by product and what the market condition is. If there's a non-farm payroll on Friday morning, for example, they're probably going to be very reticent to start hitting the decay on Monday afternoon. But if it's a quiet week and it's a long holiday weekend, you'll start seeing that decay come out very, very early. So it, it's a fluid issue, a great question, but I would certainly try to disabuse you of that notion that theta is just this thing that progresses like you see on the chart because it, it varies by product, it varies by the order flow, that's the huge driver of theta, as well as the other events and factors that are lurking in a name. You know, you're not going to see any theta come out around earnings because they're just not going to take it out because they want to keep that vol in and then it's all going to come crashing out the day after, the minute after the earnings event is announced unless it's a huge surprise. So that's why you see premiums collapse after earnings events. So there are a number of different examples out there where theta performs asymmetrically different than you might think. And so it's certainly something to keep an eye on and start evaluating the products that you trade on a regular basis to see how they perform going into those environments, into long holiday weekends, into earnings events. And you start to get a feel for how they perform from a theta perspective and you have a much better handle going into trading those products, how they actually perform. Great, great questions from everybody. I love these these thematic little episodes we can do here but unfortunately that's all the time we have for this episode of options playbook but as always before i go let me check in with your regular host brian to see what he's cooking that may interest you until the next time we can all gather here together and open up the playbook well the biggest thing that's happening uh we're taping this uh, prior to its its launch but i will be in tampa florida doing an event with vector vest and you can actually just google that uh, vector vest tampa florida i will be representing trade king and it's going on at the airport there in tampa so that's that's the most here and now thing that we have going on. But, you know, as always, we have uh, Options Playbook Radio every Thursday. And then we also have our midday market calls Monday and Tuesday at noon Eastern time. So that's what I got going on, Mark. Good stuff, Brian. I look forward to checking out that event over there with Vector Vest. And in the meantime, you guys can check us out again on the next episode of Options Playbook. The Options Playbook was brought to you by Trade King Group. Anything mentioned today is for educational purposes and is not a recommendation or advice. Options involve risk. Please refer to TradeKing.com slash ODD to review additional risks involved with trading options. Securities offered through TradeKing LLC, member FINRA and SIPC. The preceding program was a production of the Options Insider Radio Network. For more quality options programs, visit www.theoptionsinsider.com or search for Options Insider Radio Network in your podcast provider of choice. Listeners can also access all of our programming through our mobile app, available in iTunes and on Google Play. Don't forget to follow along with your favorite programs and submit your own questions for the hosts at twitter.com slash options, facebook.com slash the Options Insider or via questions at theoptionsinsider.com. 